So you are a young and naive 19 years old girl who has absolutely no experience in sewing, well maybe except in sewing for dolls clothes. And you have absolutely no money and no instruments and you need to make this. How the heck to make this? <laughs> My most favorite character to cosplay, and actually the reason why I became a cosplayer, is Garnet Alexandros 17 from Final Fantasy IX, the best video game in the entire world. <laughs> I love her with all of my heart and passion since childhood, and I had a dream to become like her. Even though I was a child, I started to realize quickly that this dream is actually not so possible to become true. <laughs> because for being a princess you should like, well, live in a castle and stuff. But at some point in my life, I discovered what is that thing called cosplay. And then I thought that maybe this wild dream came became true. I will definitely tell you my whole Final Fantasy story, but right now, today, I want to concentrate about how I actually managed to make Garnet cosplay. And I made it even though I was like complete zero in stuff like this. <laughs> I had almost no experience in cosplay before and I learned everything from zero by myself and I really think that I can help you too as well with garnet cosplay or even some different cosplay or just in cosplay or maybe just in art. Maybe it will be just a funny story to listen to. I started making this costume in 2015 and I completed it in 2018 but it doesn't mean that I just like worked for three entire years on this costume, no, most of this time I procrastinated. <laughs> I worked with uh, a very big breakups, breakdowns, breaks, with very big breaks still pretty long and complicated journey and i can't wait to share this story with you guys Investigating and learning were my first steps. I started with the simple analyzing what is this costume should be in real life, how it looks how it moves, what does it consist of, and what it would be made of. And I ran into the very first problem right on this first step. And it's actually a very common problem among cosplayers. And the problem is that from even original and official sources, the costume of the character looks different. The separated details of it looks different. And it is a problem if you want to be like a uh, canonical as much as it as it possible. <laughs> For example, this official Garnet artwork, it shows her jumpsuit pretty closely and you can see that it consists of one piece there. But if we will look at screenshots, we will see that upper part of the jumpsuit is a little bit more complicated. And it consists out of several pieces and has many seams. Blouse sleeve on the art has something like elastic band at here, but on screenshots, from cutscenes and in-game it looks more like just puffed sleeves, without any elastics. What I actually like on this art is how Garnet's boots are look. They have kind of sharp shape and you can see running stitch and cute tab or how is it called? So after making 1000 different screenshots from cutscenes, from gameplay and investigating concept arts and some fun arts too, I created the most canonical as it possible Garnet cosplay look. So my next tip is a trick for you. You can take separated details from different sources and combine them and create your own perfect cosplay look, which will 
suit you the most, which will make you happier, and what if you feel that what will suit you the most, what will make you more beautiful in your cosplay costume. Yes, you can do this. <laughs> You can even make something in your costume against the canon if you really feel that it will look at you better than the original detail. Yes, yes, you can do that. But it's like very high level of cosplaying, of course. <laughs> we will talk about it later. Yeah, but you can do it. There is my measurements. 2015 what really helped me to create one single complete garnet look is sketching i just drew how the costume should look like in the end and it really helped me a lot just to take everything in my head in order as you can see i drew every details how lacing should look and that thread should be orange not red all separated pieces how seam should look there and there and there and lacing on the back and eyelids and stoppers for thread sketch for belt and there is the glue and this is the sleeve or all the measurements I did for proportions Complete sketch for belts on the legs with all measurements too. So it doesn't even matter if you can draw or not. No need to draw neat straight lines, no need shading and perspective and proportions. It's just draw sketches to show your mind how to do it. And if you are able to make it on paper, like drawing, you can easily handle the creation of the costume itself with the real materials. After I decided from which materials and how I'm supposed to make different details of my cosplay, I went to second tragical problem in entire cosplay making. For making costumes, you need like, well, a pattern. You can't like just take fabric and make a costume from it. Well, maybe you can, but it's kind of even more complicated than from a pattern. Well, a pattern, how to make them? Of course, when I started my cosplay, there were no complete garnet exclusive pattern for her costume. And I don't even think that you can find them right now, actually. <laughs> well, it's such not popular character to cosplay. And even back there, almost 10 years ago, there were no patterns. But right now, the situation on pattern market is much more better than it were before. So, how to get your pattern for your costume? First of all, you can use so-called wrapping technique with tape and film. This technique commonly used by many professional cosplayers. Kamui, for example. Kimpatsu cosplay, Jessica Nigri, all those girls are using this wrapping technique. So you like just wrap yourself with film, then cover this film of the tape, and then draw right on yourself lines of your costumes, and then just cut it. And it's actually the best way to get your pattern because it gives you as sleek and as smooth result as it possible. But there is like problem that you are actually need a human being. <laughs> who can actually wrap you with film and tape and who can actually draw what you want on yourself and who actually can cut you. I haven't those person with me, even though I had friends, but I can't ask them for some reason. Why didn't I use this technique back then? Okay, it doesn't matter. So the next way how you can do the pattern, well, actually not using the pattern, you can use just mock-up technique when you just take fabric and pin it down on your mannequin and then just cut excess fabric that you don't need voila but for this specific way you need another thing a mannequin i didn't have mannequin too <laughs> so i went to the hardest i constructed patterns by myself based on my basic body pattern 
if we go simply base pattern allows you to sew sleekest shell for your body with fabric i know it's like the most boring and most complicated part of cosplay but it is so important to being able to create your own patterns for your costumes it will gives you like freedom to do everything on the planet earth well i'm talking about cosplay everything on planet earth that dedicated to cosplay sewing <laughs> so how to make your basic body sleek whatever good pattern for your body there is different ways first of all you can just download it from the internet or if you have like specific body shape you can order it from a professional tailor that is actually a very good way because you can order it once and then based on this pattern you can create your different costumes later and if we're talking about me again i used the most complicated and tougher way to create my basic body pattern i just drafted it by myself well i used to very beginning friendly tutorial back then when i started and it really helped me like well just understand what is this sewing how to make things for your body out of fabric how is it works it's so helpful for your mind just for understanding i can share this tutorial that i used back there with you because it's first of all it's not in english second of all it's actually not as good i made many mistakes with these tutorials and i can promise you now 10 years later there's a lot of many good tutorials where you can find as many information as you want if you want to create it by yourself if you're not afraid because guys well it's actually not as hard it just looks hard and complicated because well like measurements and drafting how to make them but if you will do it step by step with simple tutorial you will be able to create it and again i must say it, the best thing that it will give you is understanding what is happening <laughs> So I separated Garnet's jumpsuit on two pieces, upper everything on her chest and back and lower her waist and her whole legs. For upper part I took my basic body pattern and drafted all of the pieces on it. Since her jumpsuit is sleek to her body, I took the pattern with zero increases for freedom of fitting and because of it, it doesn't need any big design change as well. I took about 5 cm for shoulders, made it a little bit higher on my bone. For a line of middle seam, I took this line on my draft. It called armhole line. I made everything quite intuitive actually, so it would look nice on a draft and seem to be okay. <laughs> But now I can say that I did many mistakes. First of all, I didn't close I didn't close a chest tuck and my shoulders went way too low. This tuck must be closed and only after this you should do anything with your patterns. It should be closed like this. So it goes like this and here should be tuck too. That would fix the whole shoulder situation, so please be careful. And this line, I made it way too straight. It is a very bad thing to be straight in sewing. It is actually a bad thing in many life situations. <laughs> And I didn't place some tags over there, but actually for the first pattern in my life, I did an amazing job actually. And I am really very proud of myself. Fabric. I went to a local fabric store in my town with my friends and bought this Biflex orange fabric. First of all, it's very affordable. Second of all, it has beautiful gold shine on that reminds color of Garnet jumpsuit on game model. It's a little bit darker than Garnet jumpsuit should be, but I couldn't find fabric better in my store, so I used this. Still pretty recognizable. After washing and ironing the fabric, I transferred 
all the pieces from pattern. Actually, it is the easiest part starts here. You just trim everything and use it together. Just be careful and don't confuse different parts of this together. Garnet's jumpsuit has interesting seams on borders, which I recreated too as well. I sewed on sides of the pieces something like BS tape to recreate this volume. It was hard for me to do it on my sewing machine, so I did it on my hands. It took some time, but not as much as pattern drafting to be honest, and I was very happy with the result. And I remember in which order I sewed it. Uh, I guess at first I sewed this part with this part and on the back. No, no, I keep it seam here. So firstly I did this stitches for this parts on back. Firstly, not even these stitches. This was this was when I sewed it together. So I sewed this part with this part. I did seams on this side and this side. Yes, there seems to. I sewed this part with this part together. Then I sewed this seam and I did this seam. Not completely to the end because when these seams were still open. I sewed it together, but it looks really not so accurate at all, so I think it is okay to sew it till the end and then just sew it by your hands, like this. You see, this angle turns out not as accurate as it should be. Oh, and I even have like something like hole here. Yes, and I did it like all the way, uh, like here, here, and here too. And the back part was like the easiest part. It only has this border seems like show yourself, show yourself, like here and there. To be honest, I really think that I should made this part even. This drip is not necessary here. I think I just seen it in a couple of references, so I think that it is a good idea. But it's actually not a good idea because you can see it from there and it's look like chunky, bulky, not so good at all. So you can do it completely even. So yeah, actually not so complicated at all. Yay! <laughs> You can see hand stitches right there. It actually would be a good idea to see like this thing that goes under the main fabric. How is it called? I will write it right there. That will be okay to do that thing. Yeah. Here's on back is my a bad attempt to do some kind of weathering. It was way too hard to do on reflex fabric. I sewed these little transparent pins, clips, buttons. How the heck is this called? And I did it on blouse as well, so when I'm wearing this costume, this chest part won't move anywhere. I sewed velcro here for bra stripe support, but it actually works very badly. We haven't actually talked about lower part yet though. For me, the hardest thing in it was to make it as seamless as it possible. On screenshots you can see that there is absolutely no seams on outer sides of the legs. Not from behind, not even on inner sides. Well, it's no ways to do it without any seams completely, at least from a fabric. So I managed to do it with only three themes on the back and on the inner sides of the legs. Do you remember when I tell you about wrapping technique for creating your base pattern? Well, it is actually the same thing. <laughs> and for this thing, I needed help from my friends and I'm so grateful for it. Gosh, guys, thank you so much. So they just wrapped me with fabric 
like this. And firstly, they sewed me on my back as slick as possible. And then they went between my legs. <laughs> so, well, yeah, you need like help from a friend who you actually trust or who you had a crash on. <laughs> That will be pretty useful, yeah. Well, it was actually easy and hard at the same time. It was easy because you need to make like three pretty long but still simple seams on your body. The hardest part that sometimes my friend, especially when she went between my legs, everything that she can use at this time is just her intuition. <laughs> it's really hard to see like where, where is the fabric, where is the excess fabric, where is where is the needed fabric but if you will went slowly and carefully you will achieve that everything will be okay and it was actually pretty funny <laughs> yeah pretty pretty funny experience and i was poked with needle a lot Why there is a triangle? I don't even know. <laughs> As you can see, the seams are not even and perfect, but it still worked and helped me to achieve canonical look with less stitches as it possible. I actually forgot to mention that all seams I made on a regular sewing machine with regular not zigzag stitch. It is the wrong way to sew flexible fabric, but I use the tiniest stitching size as it has, like almost zero, and it helps to sew flexible materials. It holds it, but at the same time it is still stretchy. After the lower and upper parts were done, I sewed them together and then made this triangular cut in the middle for lacing. But I did another mistake here, I did it way too big, I based it on my navel, it's somewhere like here, but it is turned out way too low, it's not supposed to be on your navel, it's supposed to be somewhere on your waistline, but it is okay. I sewed it aged with a long, long BS tape thingy, the same way as I did it on other edges of upper part pieces. And I even turned it like a little bit inside out, as you can see, because I seen something like this on screenshots. It's kind of looked out a little bit, so I try to recreate this as well. I took a pretty long BS tape thingy. It's, it starts like here and it goes way, way, way down to this part, to this center. So it looked as seamless as it possible. Lacing itself took me a hell of a long time. A hell of a long time. <laughs> On costume sources it looks like lacing made out of the same material as a jumpsuit. I tried to find something similar at sewing accessory shop, but I couldn't. So I decided to took a special silk cord and make a cover for it from the same fabric of the jumpsuit. And it was so damn hard! Firstly, I made this lacing like fully functioning, like it should be on corset, the real lacing and stuff. So what does that mean? That I took the hell long silk lace, I sewed a hell long cover with Piflex for it, and I for a hell long time turned it inside out this cover for lacing for an eternity and then I placed this silk cord inside this thing for an eternity hella as well it was so damn hard it was such a pain it, it was pain and I felt pain in that it was even harder for me mentally than the creating pattern from like the <laughs> from the scratch because I did it with a tiny safety bobby pin because I was afraid to break it and wrap it on some place so it wouldn't slop in any places and then just
I made it. I was very happy. And I wear it for a couple times. And then I decided to make all the slicing fake. <laughs> At first I did like only one thread here fake and then all of them are like regular because it's impossible to make like true lacing with not even number of holes as you can see there's five of them and when i did it even with four holes i realized that it is really very uncomfortable it always moves always went off it creates some thickness out there which is looks not good with such a thin sleek bodysuit and then I realized that it is much more better to make them shorter all of them make it shorter and I leave like only these two holes like with normal looking lacing <laughs> And it's much more easier to make such a short threads for this lacing with Biflex cover. It's much more easy. Please, guys, learn, learn from my mistakes, okay, guys? Please. I suit it there and there so it won't move anywhere. Why did I use gray thread? What the heck? Doesn't I have like orange? And there is a icing on the back too. With stoppers. It's like basic plastic stoppers that I had. Belts on legs. I'm actually so proud of it. As with the full jumpsuit, I started with detailed screenshot research and sketches. This part of the costume is actually pretty complicated and tricky. So to handle it, I designed this belt on paper first. It really helped me not to confuse in everything. My favorite type of Lego. <laughs> So these pieces are made from the same B-flex that I used for a jumpsuit and they are folded like this. Belt part is kind of tricky here. This tongue belt goes like there, but this part is actually questionable. It seems like it's worth something like this on screenshot, but I think that it is actually pretty useless. So here it goes on here, like inside, and then sewed there. And this tongue belt goes like here and there and goes like inside. So it creates this belt look. It's not supposed to be like a belt around your whole leg. And this belt goes to this buckle. There is another buckle, as you can see on screenshots and references. And at the end, it just has the same thing that were on top. We fold it the same way. And here, how it look on fabric. I made belt out of white cotton, but this will be much more better if that will be like leather. Because it is too soft, I used this bobby pin, or how is it called? so we don't want to move anywhere. And here goes another buckle and to be able to wash it, this whole costume, because these buckles won't survive it for sure, I sewed it on velcro. Mm, pretty, pretty convenient, eh? <laughs> buckles! It is the most interesting part. How do you think? What is it made of? It is out of paper mache. Basically, cardboard, paper, and PVA glue. Yes, I made it out of paper. Looks good, yeah? Well, at this time, I had no experience with plastic or foam, and I had no idea how to make it so thin and smooth. So I took the material that I knew the best at the moment. Here you can see what I looked like at the first steps of creating. I just cover it with few layers of newspaper, sanded it and cover it with putty and painted it silver. And I made the tongue of this buckle the same way, just did it on the wire, so I can put it right on this buckle. 
it, it, it turned out to be so cool, <laughs> like real silver and very, very canonical. I'm very happy with it. And then I sewed wool construction of this on my jumpsuit by hand, carefully, so it won't go anywhere. And on the lower, lower part, I put elastic so it will be easily to wear. Pattern for a garnet's blouse is actually the same as basic body pattern because it's actually not a blouse, it's a body as you can see. I'm not sure that it is canonical, but it's definitely much more comfortable to wear under the jumpsuit. It won't move anywhere and there are some clues on her concept art and at her transform that it's supposed to be a body. So, because it's supposed to be pretty tight and sleek, I didn't use any increases for freedom of fitting or used like one centimeter. <laughs> because this fabric is not flexible and it will be very uncomfortable to wear without freedom of fitting completely. The fabric is actually just white cotton or something. It's so cheap and because of it the blouse is much wrinkled. I need to iron it all the time. This place is for gathering on the chest and I made here the same mistake as with the jumpsuit. These lines are way too straight. It is bad to be straight and soon. Please, please remember it. Why I move this side seam a little bit further? Hmm, I don't remember. Here the back part. I measured it with the back part on the jumpsuit so it would show exactly as much as I needed. For being able to wear it, I used hidden zipper. And I always was afraid to use hidden zippers, but it turned out to be pretty easy to do. It is my first hidden zipper that I sewed myself, and I'm so proud. It has four tucks on the waist to two on the front and two on the back. Or how is it called? Darts? How, how is it actually called? Please, please write down in the comment. Gathering on the chest is made out of a separate long piece of fabric. I just took this lay, multiplied it by three and gathered it, sewed bees on top and sewed it on chest. But I sewed it not straight, I did it a little lower on the middle, so it created a cute neckline. Here I show you those transparent clips that I sewed to my jumpsuit so I can pin it right on my blouse. Here how I sew it around the edges. Back of the blouse is actually the visible part, especially when Dagger cuts her hair. But as you can see, buttons on here are not even. I actually turn it upside down my whole town to find this exact button as I need it. I need it kind of round and with this hole that goes like inside the button. But I couldn't! I found the only one! But it's actually pretty cute button. And since I had only one button, I was forced to use just regular boring round buttons. And because my measurements was not so perfect, this back of the blouse sucks a little bit. But under the hair it is not visible. And I made holes for buttons really very badly on my sewing machine. But it was like my very first experience, so I... <laughs> I wasn't so lucky as with a hidden zipper over there, yes. Here's how back looks inside out. Despite the fact that I conceived this blouse as a bodysuit, I used regular blouse pattern. And for the lower part, I just used 
triangles <laughs> which is pretty lame but since it all under the jumpsuit and it's not visible i decided not to bother at that moment i even glued velcro to this part of the costume because soon velcro was like a torches for me back then until i learned how to sew it on a sewing machine do not use glue on your velcro though it will fall off it will it will at the end of the day, I seemed to do. Yeah. No, this is not the spaceship. It is a sleeves pattern. <laughs> For the iconic garnet sleeves, I combined two designs in this draft. I took the base of my sleeve and turned it in this. <laughs> I combined two designs for sleeve over there. So call it leg or mutton part, so it creates volume on her shoulders. And flavored sleeve at the bottom. Here how it looks closed. And this part I made a little bit wider before I opening it. So it would have much more volume, more volume. It's supposed to be really very voluminous, but this part of the sleeve should stay as slick as it possible. It was pretty hard to figure it out. I even did a couple of mock-ups to work out the design. I'm actually still thinking how it will be better to combine these two very voluminous parts and keep this middle part thin and sleek on the hand. I did it a little longer than my hand, so I can gather it, put on my glow, so it creates the volume. Did you know that sewing sleeve inside the armhole is like the hardest thing to do in seamstressing, seam seamstressing, <laughs> in sewing? <laughs> but it is much more easier when you have like gathered sleeves like this one. It was pretty easy. So I gathered it here and sewed it. And then I gathered it there. And this is actually how my sleeve button looks. Why you didn't use elastic, you may ask? Well, because... Um, I don't heck know why I didn't use an elastic. I thought it's more canonical to just gather and sew it since on screenshots it looks like it has no elastics. So I shouldn't use an elastic and... Oh, oh come on, please use an elastic, it's much more easier. My gloves! I'm so proud of it. Glows turns out so perfectly. This is actually the part of the costume that I received most questions about how I made it. What pattern did you use for it? I asked really many times exactly about this part of costume, but it actually took me not as many time and uh, suffering as I did for blouse or for jumpsuit. And it's it, actually, I'm so, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I just took basic glow pattern but made it much more bigger than my hand. As you can see, I really wanted to achieve this big chunky hands look that Garnet had and other characters had in Final Fantasy IX art style. But again, the same mistake, I did these lines way too straight. It is bad thing to be straight in sewing. And this part that goes between fingers like this. <laughs> I took artificial leather of such a pleasant burgundy shade. Oh, I was very lucky to find it in my local fabric store. At first I took this top part of glow and sealed it borders with the same BS tape thingy technique as I did on my jumpsuit before, so it looked more canonical. Then I just weathered it with acrylic paint for better looking and volume. Then I sewed this part between the fingers. I picked the wrong length of the fingers, so I had to adjust it already in place and cut off the excesses. And I couldn't figure out the size of the thumb hole correctly, so I had to sew it in like this.
buckles buckles are actually really very interesting part of this cosplay so when i searched for accessories for my cosplay i couldn't find these exact small and rounder buckles in stores at my town but i found it a little bit dark grayish color so i decided to paint it silver at first but when i painted it it turns out to be way too thick and sticky and i really didn't like it so then i just decided to sand off this acrylic and after sanding i realized that this dark grayish paint is actually sanded too and it leaves this silver shade exactly a shade that i needed so this problem like was solved by itself <laughs> it was so so pleasant why it didn't work So that they were voluminous and kept their shape, I filled the gloves with hollow fiber, since my hands are not as big. So yeah, after I'm putting these gloves on, I can't like do anything with these hands. But it looks so good, it looks so canonic. It is actually okay to suffer a little bit. And I want to make like other pair of clothes for my new costume, which will be a little bit slicker to my hand, so it will be more comfortable to wear on such things like conventions or some harsh photo shoots, because you know, well, you actually pretty useless with this because you can't do like anything. Everything you can do is just to be pretty. Well, this is actually important to be pretty. Yes. And the last thing that I wanted to share with you today is my boots, but I can't find them actually. It looks like I throw it away. But you know, I really don't like how I made my first boots for garnet and right now I'm using like other boots so it just doesn't matter where they are now but i have like couple photos so i can just show you them for my first garnet boots i used actually boots that i wear by myself <laughs> and i asked my mom to buy me exactly these boots because well first of all they look like garnet one and second of all i really plan to use them on my cosplay <laughs> But it's not the best option for dagger boots, to be honest. First of all, because it has some kind of details that are not canonical. But the biggest issue is that they are not big enough for her. If we look at Garnet's proportions, we may see that food should be as abnormally big as her hands. So then it will look canonical and proportional. And I made my gloves big, but I didn't make the same with my shoes, so I'm not completely happy how it looks. Well, for these boots, I took this base and then I covered it with tongue with leather. I made it with tape and film technique, I already told you about it. And with this pattern, I created tongue on top of these boots and I added a cube top on the back side of it. And then I just sewed it ages with white thread and with running stitch it was actually pretty hard and i used the pliers to pull needle from the leather <laughs> and after it i took acrylic paint and weathered ages with it as well as i did with gloves and it really created very deep and cute look of the entire boots stay tuned for more fun and for for more <laughs> stay tuned for more fun and more final fantasy 9 content <laughs>